I'm in LA for a few days for work and instead of staying at the usual corporate -y hotel, I decided to look for something a little bit different. The Charlie used to belong to Charlie Chaplin. And then a few decades ago, a Los Angeles business person bought the property, redid it, restored it, and it is beautiful. It is a compound of several different English themed cottages, which are all rooms. And they're not even just rooms, they're like apartments. I am in the Dillon. It's on the ground floor. And this is what you see when you walk in, the living room with a workspace, with a whole sofa, two armchairs. To the right, as you come in, there are these display cases with books. Obviously, lots of Charlie Chaplin memorabilia and books around the property. And then one of the things I love about this property is that everyone gets a full kitchen. Little seating area if you want to sit outside. This is funny. There are rules, no cooking or microwaving of fish. Just past the living room is the massive bedroom. There's an armchair on the left, lots of natural light, California king size bed. You can enter the bathroom via the main living area or through the bedroom. The bathroom has these beautiful tiles, more storage space. This place is more storage space. Oh, this is, this is exciting. This is the washer and dryer. The toiletries are by Bigelow, which is a New York company. I got here a little bit early and so my room wasn't ready yet. So to kill time, I went to Erewhon. I'm still wearing my airplane clothes and my compression socks. I went to the one by this road. I got some groceries because I knew I had a full kitchen and also this hotel doesn't have a restaurant so they don't do breakfast. Also, I'm pretty sure this fridge is like almost double the size of my fridge in New York. I'm also really proud of myself because I packed for my entire, it's like almost an entire week's trip in just this Patagonia like backpack. Obviously I am not in the hotel room that I was in yesterday. Immediately after filming that Erewhon haul, I put everything away in the fridge. I was so excited. Settling in, I was eating my tuna wrap and sitting at the desk in the living room, doing some emails, catching up because I'd been on a flight all day. And I started to feel this itching on my back. And I went to the bathroom and I like looked under my shirt. There was like this giant mosquito bite. And I sort of just chalked it up to, oh, like I was outside for a little bit. Maybe I got a mosquito bite. And then I noticed I had another one on my arm here. So I have a giant one on my back, one on my arm, chalked up to bad luck, going outside, waiting for a lift outside, drinking my Hailey Bieber skin glaze smoothie outside. And I went back to the desk and I continued eating my tuna wrap. And as, as I was emailing, I realized that my like, right leg had just started itching. This is over like the course of maybe 20 or 30 minutes. And so I was wearing long pants. I was still wearing my airplane clothes at this point because I was just so hungry. I wanted to eat something. I didn't want to change. So I looked, I had mosquito bites all over my ankle on my right side and all over my knee. I was like, that's weird. I'm wearing long pants. I'm wearing socks. Like I was wearing very thin socks. I wear compression socks on the plane. And I was like, well, maybe this is like some freak thing from outside too. Maybe they have really intense mosquitoes here because it's hot, it's California. They just had this really big rainy season that they've never had before in LA. So I'm sort of chalking up to that. I do look around the, I, I do look around the hotel room because I am paranoid about bed bugs. So I do take my iPhone flashlight and I look because I was sitting on the sofa. I was like, well, maybe there was a bug in the sofa. I have no idea. So I'm, I'm starting to feel like a little bit anxious at this point because this is like, who wouldn't feel anxious if you don't know what's biting you. And I couldn't find anything. So I thought, well, maybe this is also just from being outside. Maybe I'm just starting to get these welts now. There were mosquito bite welts that I was getting all over my knee and my ankle. And I sat back down on the desk and maybe 20 or 30 minutes later, 
my left knee starts to itch and then I like go and I look under my pants and my left knee and there's tons of mosquito bites. So I realized this is happening in real time and that something is biting me through my clothes. And I think it's because when you're sitting, like your pants are stretched over your knee so it's easier to bite your, or I don't know, I've never gotten mosquito bites through my clothes before. Although I was wearing all black and what I do know from going on safari like 10 years ago is that mosquitoes are very attracted to black clothes for some reason. So if you ever go on safari, don't wear black clothes. So I realized that this was happening in real time. And because I was sitting at a desk in that hotel room, I went under the desk and I looked with my iPhone flashlight. I really don't know what I would do with this flashlight. Although I don't like that it's on the home screen. And I look under the desk and there are all these, like, not all, there's were that many, there were like a few giant mosquitoes <laughs> under the desk. And it was so scary and I didn't know what to do. And it wasn't my house, so I don't have like, I don't know, bug spray or Windex or anything. Or I, I kill bugs with hairspray at home. So I didn't have anything to kill the bugs with. So I just took a hand towel and I was very brave and I like killed the mosquitoes and they were full of my blood. And I left the towel on the desk. And then I was like, I don't know what to do. Cause I really, really did want to stay in that hotel because it's so beautiful. You saw like, it's such a beautiful room. And I really planned my trip around having a kitchen and a washing machine. And I packed very little because I had a washing machine and I, I had this moment where I remembered something my friend Andy told me a couple of weeks ago. He was in New York and there was an Uber surge and it was going to cost a lot of money for us to take an Uber somewhere really close, but it was pouring rain <laughs> and he turns to me, he goes, Danica, this is what we have money for. So I was like, you know, I can't stay here for four nights and be eaten alive by these invisible mosquitoes that don't buzz and are hard to find. I would just slowly start to go crazy. So I was, I was already starting to feel my anxiety rocket up because you can't see it if you can't hear it or see it and they're biting you and you're just getting these welts every 20 or 30 minutes. I'm also very sensitive to mosquito bites. So these welts will like last for a week or two weeks. And it's just, it, I hate it so much. Nobody likes getting mosquito bites. So I just like something clicked and I just packed everything up. I packed all the food up that I bought at Erewhon, I packed all my clothes up and I went to the front desk and it's not their fault, right? Like I didn't fault them at all. I kept on apologizing because of course it puts them out of somebody who's gonna be staying in a room for four nights. I also did say like it is, it, it, was, it was not a cheap room. It was like $350 a night and they have a no cancellation policy. And I knew that I was taking a risk by leaving two and a half hours after I checked in, that I may just be on the hook for the entire thing. And I guess I always thought in the back of my head I could just dispute it with American Express because American Express has travel insurance coverage and cancellation coverage and stuff if you use their card and you book. That's the one thing that's really good about having that very expensive card. But I went to the front desk. They were very understanding. I did show them photos of the dead mosquitoes that I killed. They were shocked. I mean, it's not their fault. They don't know how, they can't control mosquitoes from coming in. That hotel is so beautiful because there's so much greenery and so many water installations, but that all harbors mosquitoes. If you open a window, they'll come. There's nothing the hotel can do. It's totally not their fault. The hotel is so amazing and it's so beautiful. And maybe I'll go back and stay there when the weather is cold and there are no bugs, but it was an emergency. So I checked out, they were super nice about it. They called me right afterwards saying that they weren't gonna charge me the whole four nights, but they would have to charge me that one day because I did check in, whatever. Like, it's not ideal, but amazing. Like, thank you so much. I really appreciate that they did that. So I called an Uber and I got in the car and on my phone, I booked in at the Sofitel, which is where I always stay when I come to LA because it's close to the office I work out of. So here I am. And I think the life lesson here is something that I never thought about. And I'm, I'm a pretty seasoned traveler. I've been all over the world. I've lived in a lot of places and I've been a lot of places I feel very lucky, but something I've never had to think about or never thought about never occurred to me is if 
it's a big mosquito season, maybe consider staying in a hermetically sealed high-rise corporate hotel where bugs can't get in. They can sort of control the internal environment. So that was my big life learning from yesterday. Today's office. Day. I have Friday off, sort of. I have my computer with me in case I need to do any work, but I thought I would come to Din Tai Fung to grab an early lunch. I've accomplished very little today. After lunch, I walked around the mall. I went to the first ever Good American store, which was nice, but didn't have a lot of stuff there. Then I had a mince around the Nordstrom sale at Century City, and then it started to get kind of hot, and I was getting tired, so I came back. I've been really tired today, I think, because we had such an intense work session yesterday all day with a client, which was very productive, but a whole day of talking is, I find it so exhausting. So yeah, I lay in bed and I looked at TikTok for a couple of hours and I eat a lot of candy. I think this is the first time I've had candy in a month. I've been trying something new to try to figure out my blood sugar and try to get it to be a bit lower over the past month and it's been working but today I was just so tired so I had some peanut M&Ms which are delicious and some gummy bears probably probably too many um, I'm still pretty tired but it's coming up on six o'clock and I'm meeting my friend Susan for dinner <laughs> It's Saturday and this is my hair before. I am gonna go get a haircut. I haven't had a haircut in about a year. There's one hairstylist, Ramon Garcia, who I've gone to twice before and I love the work he does because I have long hair and it's straight and it sort of just like sits there. And I think it looks like I have a lot of hair because it's long but in reality when I put my hair in a ponytail I actually have pretty thin hair and he does an amazing job giving movement and volume and body to thinner hair so I've been to him twice before the last time I saw him was December 2019 I flew in from Hong Kong he was in New York and I went to go get a haircut we talked about the next time I would get a cut and then the entire world shut down for two years. So I'm so excited to get a haircut with him today. This is what my hair looks like before. It's quite long. You can see it's a little bit dry at the bottoms, you know? Fingers crossed, it comes out okay. A lot of my white hair is here. I don't know if you can tell. I just checked into the Hilton at Universal. I stayed here before. It's a great Hilton. I actually really like the Hilton chain and I do all my points with them for hotels. I think now that my hair is done, I'm really happy with it. This is not the normal way I would style it, but I love it when they give it a little bend in the salon because it makes me feel different. It's a gorgeous day outside, so I think I'm actually going to 
walk over to City Walk at Universal Studios and get some lunch because I haven't really eaten anything today. It's also literally, they will tell you that it's a half mile or a 10 minute walk to Universal Studios, but it's actually like a three minute walk. It is so close. You just walk to the, you walk through the property through the dining room restaurant area you exit you make a right you cross the street and you're pretty much there so okay let's go get some lunch super hungry i also want to do a little shopping a little pre-shopping before going to the park tomorrow well this is a nice touch look love Universal Studios City Walk in Hollywood because it has so many super fun chain restaurants and unique restaurant concepts and also lots of stores. This is a great place to pre-shop. I stopped by to get my Super Nintendo World wristband ahead of time because I'm getting to the park super early tomorrow and I don't want to waste time trying to buy this first thing in the morning. So I set it up Then I went to go see Oppenheimer. Now I'm all set and ready to go tomorrow. Early access day, 6.50, we're here. So many people here, it's sold out. So Andrew couldn't get a ticket, but here we are heading down to Lower Lot to Super Nintendo World. So it's Toastal Cafe, so cutthroat, but you have to scan this thing as soon as, as soon as you get in, and then you may be able to go. I have a Mario hat. I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> We're stuck. The ride is stuck. <laughs> Exhausted. I'm gonna go back to the room, maybe eat in the hotel tonight, and then back to New York tomorrow. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.